Today's episode of Kibuka Podcast describes how killings intensified in Kamonyi starting on 14th May 1994. Many Tutsis fled to Musambira Health Center hoping to find refuge there, but instead, on the same day, majority of men and boys were killed at the health center. The following morning, killers returned to kill women and children. On May 15, 1994, RFI radio station hosted in Hiramwe leader Robert Kajuga, who publicly denied all the Tutsi killings committed by the genocidal government. On 14th to 18th May 1994, massacres of Tutsis at Musambira and Bjimana when the international community was reluctant to intervene and save Tutsis. From May 10th to 18th 1994, Leaders of the massacres in the former Chargwa and Tumba sectors ironically declared that girls and women would no longer be killed in that area. They pledged security and demanded those in hiding to get out of their hiding places and return to their abandoned homes. A man called Joseph Jaragoye took the loudspeaker and walked around the entire area of Chargwa, urging Tutsis in particular women and girls to get out of hiding because the government had restored peace. However, that was a technique to identify those in hiding places and gather them in one place. Joseph Jaragoye was sentenced and completed his sentence. He now lives in Mohanga district. Following his announcement, many Tutsis came out of their hiding places and returned to their abandoned homes in both Chargwa and Tumba sectors. In the family of Abaturagara of Bizimana Frederic, survivors went to their abandoned homes like everyone else. Sadly, the killers attacked and killed them every day for roughly five days. Also, they would come always to check if no Tutsi had escaped by counting. Minante Ernest was one of those checking every morning. On May 14, 1994, early in the morning, Muka Chaka Sararin was killed, and all the remaining girls were killed, as boys had already been killed. The girls killed that day were Wirajire Gotyos, also known as Jolie, Kanyindi Simfroz, Musabga Soni, and Elders, Nidamirimo Suzan, Nidabimana Therese and her two children, Gracia Mukanwai, Kaisire, and Nidabukanga Gayolanda. Their bodies were moved out of their homes and thrown into a pit at a neighbor's house. The murderers killed them with clubs, spears, and other traditional weapons that were later found in the pit when their bodies were exhumed to be laid in decent places. Other victims of those killings were hiding in various localities of Chargwa sector. Those killed included Tukwajira Muchiza Everest, Gasana's wife, Victoria, Muka Angusi, Kagongo, Nirakambi Gashamari, Nirakavego, Madeline, Kawarisa, Benemhinga, Severina, Gagai, child of Burara Martin, three children of Niro Ravenson, Kanimba Inyas, Francine, Mitobotobo's wife, her two children, among others. Jean Bosco Nyambere had been hiding in the village of Tumba, and when we had the death of others, he also surrendered to the killers. Perpetrators of those killings included Minan Teonest and Uzajitiza Teresfor, neighbors to the victims. They were both sentenced by the Gachacha courts, but they have now been released after serving their sentences. Another perpetrator is Sehene Patrice, who escaped justice and now lives in Burundi. Many women and girls were killed in the area and dumped in public pits, depending on where they were killed. In addition, there were men discovered from their hiding places and killed. One of them was Mjemana Jane Pomsen, a young teacher who was killed in Kakarehe. There were many Burundian nationals living in Chargwa. They participated in the killings of Tutsis, but fled to Burundi afterwards. The tactics of lying to Tutsis that peace had been restored for them to get out of their hiding places was used to exterminate Tutsis who had survived. April 18th to 20th, 1994, that's when the last extreme killings took place in Msambira commune. On May 14, 1994, the killings intensified and some of the survivors of the massacres in Musambira Commune fled to Musambira Health Center and the headquarters of Musambira Commune. In order to bring the Tutsis in one place, authorities told them to go to the commune headquarters and at the health center. They were assured protection and shelter for as their houses had been demolished. On May 14, 1994, attackers came and surrounded the health center and all men were killed on the same day. The corpses were so many and scattered all around, even in the goats and cow's market. Therefore, Tutsi women were instructed to pick up the corpses, and most of them were their husbands. However, women refused to pick them, and killers started to beat them up, triggering them to drag the bodies on the ground and take them to the dump site for the butchery and the health center. On the morning of May 15, 1994, 
Killers raided an attack that was meant to kill all Tutsi children because on May 14, 1994, killers had exterminated only young boys and men, leaving children and women. During that attack, killers included even children who came with machetes, clubs, but were led by adult killers. On the same day, all the Tutsi children were killed by their fellow Hutu children, but women and babies were not killed. On May 16, 1994, another attack took women who were at the health center and handed them over to the killers at the roadblock established in Chakaviri. The killers at the roadblock did not kill those women, but instead took them to Kagarama and Nyerubaka. At those places, they met other attacks in which many of the women were stoned and endured all possible evils and buried alive. The killings continued in that area even in the days that followed. On May 18, 1994, Tutsis were taken refuge at St. Kizito Musambira Parish were killed. They included those who had come from different places and others who are dwellers of Musambira commune and other neighboring communes and those from Ruunda and Kigali who were on their way to Kabgai. Killers massacred them by using guns and traditional weapons. After the genocide, their bodies were exhumed and laid to rest at Chibuza Memorial. The main perpetrators of Musambira massacres include Nyangi Charles, mayor of Musambira, Karan Dominique, former mayor of Musambira, Yakaramye Abdurrahman, Sekaziga, Rukunda Kuvuga Evarist, Yumugabe Alphonse, Karambizi, former councillor, Mohozi Jafar, Harimana Joseph Elias Nhuro, Fodouar, a police officer, Randu Waridi, Vianne, Inerhamwe, and other Hutu residents. During the genocide against the Tutsi, 105 Tutsis were killed in the premises of Jimana Secondary School. The school is located in the former Jitarama Prefecture, Muchinji Commune, Mohororo Sector, Chigarama Cell, currently in Ruhango District, Jimana Sector, Bukomero Cell, Mohororo Village. The school was run by Marist Brothers until the present day. Tutsis, especially those evacuated from Kabgai, including Marist Brothers from Jimana Monastery, were taken by Uwamungu Jambosko, the head of monastery. The Maris brothers had fled to Kabgai on April 24, 1994, after their dismissal from the monastery by their colleagues. On April 29, 1994, the killers came in Bjimana school, took teachers Neziaremye Migawalazare, and went to kill him in Bjimana center where he stayed. Subsequently, on May 13, 1994, only two t teachers at Bjimana school were killed, including Rubaiza Tien, who was hiding inside the school, Gasana Bartazar, and Yira Kazungu Glorios, who lived outside the school. They were shot dead by soldiers who were in the school. Kasana was killed along with his son, Niradire Prudence. In addition, other people who participated in the killings included wives of soldiers from Gako military camp and injured ex far soldiers who had fled there after the liberation of Bujesera. On May 24, 1994, soldiers took Jimana brothers from Kabugai, where they had taken refuge. The brothers included Gatari Gaspar, who was in charge of studies at Pimana School, Nidinyin de Canisius and Vsengimana Fabien, both Maris brothers, and they were killed in Bimana. Other Tutsis killed in Bimana included Brother Mnyan Shongo de Martin, who was the head of Josephite Brothers, with a headquarter in Kabgai, Father Nyonshuti Celestin, former missionary at the Catholic parish of Bimana, and a nun called Sister Benin, one of the Abenevichida congregation. She was in charge of Kabgai Nutrition Center. In general, brothers, priests, nuns, and other Tutsis are taken refuge in Kabgai, especially those who are well known, including Karinda Viater, a sports journalist from Radio Rwanda, and others, who are taken from Kabgai and killed. Before bringing them back to be killed in Bimana, their fellow brothers of Bimana used to bring food for them in Kabgai with a hidden aim of identifying the refugees and monitoring their information until they claimed that they should be executed in Bimana. They were shot dead and killed by injured ex far soldiers who had taken refuge in the monastery. Those soldiers included Lieutenant Monique and Zai Senga, who was born in Bimana. Some of the perpetrators involved in those killings included Namugawumu Emmanuel, Nduamungu Emmanuel, and Chivihira. They were all convicted of genocide by the Gachacha courts. Others at the forefront of the planning of the massacres included Lajijumana Joseph, head priest of Jimana Catholic Parish, who was sentenced to life imprisonment by the ordinary courts and is currently serving his sentence at Nyanza Prison in Mhanga. Others were Brother Ngusi Francois from Chanika in Nyamagawe District, who lived in the monastery of Maris Brothers near Jimana. He was sentenced by Gachacha courts of Muhororo sector to 25 years in jail and he is serving his sentence in Nyanza Prison. 
brother wa Mungu Bosco who lived in Jimana he became a priest after the genocide and now lives in the United States he was sentenced in absentia to 30 years in prison by the Gachacha courts of Muhoro sector Rugamba Francois a driver of Jimana school he was sentenced to 30 years in prison by the ordinary courts and is currently serving his sentence in Nyanza prison Niyamira Alexis the former MDR president in Muchinji commune and a teacher at groupe scolaire Shogwe He fled to DR Congo and is yet to be convicted. Radio France International station RFI through its journalist Jean Helen who was in Rwanda working the criminal section continued to broadcast information supporting the government and Helen conducted several exclusive interviews with the killers. On May 15, 1994, RFI hosted in Eramwe leader Robert Kajuga and he denied all the killings committed by the government led by Kambanda, its forces and the Eramwe and Imuza Migambi. Kajuga declared that only Ngotanyi and their accomplices were being killed and not civilians. Thank you for listening to another episode of Kwibuka Podcast. As always, make sure you leave us a review sharing what you like about the podcast and share with others who would be interested in listening.